Hey what's going on YouTube, Gen Day Commando here and today we're back with another reaction video and it's titled What It Takes to Become a Delta Force Operator. So I'm really looking forward to this reaction guys and I'm interested to learn a little bit more about our USA allies okay? because I don't know too much about you guys. I know quite a bit about the US Marines because I was a former Royal Marines Commando but yeah let's just get straight into it right after I've shown you this which is my merchandise that we've now got on the channel so if you want to check that out um, the links will be in the description or someone in the live chat will pop you a link so you can go check out some of this good stuff that we've got on there okay um, and like the video guys make sure you like this share and subscribe hit the notifications all that good stuff if you want to talk to us make sure you join the discord that link will be in the description as well guys but other than that let's just have a good one on, on this what it takes to become Delta Force Operator. Well, before we even get into it, guys, you know, on, on initial thoughts of reading and hist history and all of that kind of stuff, these guys are like elite you know as elite as you probably can be um yeah it goes without saying these guys are gonna it's gonna take a lot to become one of these special forces operational detachment delta or delta force remains cloaked equally in official secrecy and popular legend becoming a member of this legendary group is no easy task just how much torture is a person willing to undergo to get a prestigious job? Given that an average of 250 resumes are submitted for every job position in the United States, one would assume quite a lot. But there's writing endless resumes, and then there's running 40 miles at night on an uneven forest trail while lugging a 50-pound rucksack, with more weight added upon achieving each waypoint. And to even get into the application pool for that particular job, you first have to master the art of willingly jumping out of a perfectly functional airplane. <laughs> yeah, we've all heard that one before in the military. Um, being a Royal Marine, we give our parachute regiment um, counterparts some stick and say the exact same thing. Why would you want to jump out of a perfectly legible airplane? But we've got these legends doing it anyway, and you know, credit to these guys, all right? It takes a lot of bottle to do this kind of stuff. This refers, of course, to the admission process for the US Army's top commando unit. Top commando unit. Is any of our US brothers on here today? Can you confirm that that's what you'd class them as, a top commando unit? I'm not sure if that's the case. I might be wrong though. Eric Haney described the experience of one of the long distance hiking in his book Inside Delta Force. I had covered just slightly over 30 miles by now but still had more than 20 to go. It was getting more and more difficult to do speed computations in my head. My hands were tingling from the rucksack straps cutting into my shoulders. Pinch. Yeah, we've all had that before as well. If you served in an elite uh, military unit, you know, you'll understand that the weights that we guys carry, you'll have, a, you'll have set weights in training, which change all the time. And you'll also have set weights um, where the historians will tell you or this is what they carry and you'll also have your keyboard warriors who'll say this is how much you carry trust me guys the the, the weight it can go up and it can double and it can, it can do some crazy things when you get in so when you read an article on the royal marines what we may carry in train you might read that it's it's 45 pounds of weapon and a rifle trust me you carry a lot more than that in reality okay when you're on operations you carry a lot more than what they say you do and some of my brothers from the United States or Sweden and the Jäger Soldats or Finland who have been watching these videos will tell you as well, there's no real set number, all right? And the numbers that you've probably heard are probably not the truth. You carry insane amounts of weight. And yeah, it does cut into your shoulders, your arms get dead, you can't feel your heart. It's, it's, it's horrendous amounts sometimes, guys. I can feel for this. Touching the nerves and arteries and restricting the blood flow to my arms. Yeah. I was bent forward against the weight of the rucksack. It felt like I was dragging a train behind me, and my feet hurt all the way up to my knees. I don't mean they were just sore, I mean they felt like I had been strapped to the rack and someone had beaten the balls of my feet with a bat. I yeah. tried to calculate the foot-pounds of energy my feet had absorbed so far today, but I had to give up the effort. I only knew that the accumulated tonnage of all those thousands of steps was immense, and it was only going to get worse. 
Yeah, and it does, guys. And your feet, like that's what you say. It's, this isn't physical. Um, you know, when you do a run or something, you're hurting. It ain't like that. It's a completely different thing. It's your body is breaking. It's not designed to do this type of physical arduous activity at all. Yeah. So your bones are hurting. Your feet are killing. And it doesn't just it doesn't just end when the physical exercise ends. That pain stays there for quite a long time. I mean, myself, my knees just off being in the Royal Marines for. Um, the, the amount of time that I did, it, it's my knees are shot. All right, I can't even go out for a for a run without them hurting now, just because of what we did um, in in there, you know. So it's it is really physically arduous on the body. Technically, an elite counterterrorism special missions unit, Delta Force has been involved in virtually every major U.S. military action since the 1980s, whether attempting to rescue political prisoners from a fortified prison in Grenada nabbing Panamanian strongman Manuel Noriega, hunting Scud missiles behind Iraqi lines, battling Somali warlords, assassinating ISIS leaders, and even assisting Mexican Marines in a deadly gun battle that saw the capture of drug king Pinel Chapo. And one can only speculate about all the missions that remain classified. The unit's existence remains ritually unacknowledged by the U.S. government, despite its organization and aliases, a common one is Combat Application Group, CAG, mm being reasonably well documented in books by former members and its exports celebrated in I don't know much about this CAG what's this uh, it's the first time I've heard that uh, terminology guys let me know in the live chat if you uh, if you're watching this and if you are watching it guys make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and if you have managed to donate to the channel to support its growth then I just want to put my thumbs up to you guys and say thank you brothers I appreciate it in movies like Black Hawk Down and television series like The Unit Black Hawk Down, one of the best Delta films Force ever. Was founded by Colonel Charles Beckwith, who had served in the 1960s as an exchange officer with the British Special Air Service while it was engaged in a grinding but successful counterinsurgency campaign against communist guerrillas in Malaysia. Beckwith was one tough cookie. During his stint commanding SAS troops in the jungle, he nearly died from a bacterial infection. Then, while commanding Green Berets in Vietnam, he was struck by a .50 caliber slug. And survived after being triaged as a lost cause. Whoa, this guy is a, a badass. Special Air Service he served with, obviously, in the earlier days. Isn't he the guy who went back and originally formed it and modelled it from the British? I think he is, guys. I think he made it into what it is today based off what Britain um, goes through in their Special Forces selection. These experiences left their impression on the Georgia native who went on to devise the rigorous Q course used to train the Green Beret Special Operations Forces of today. Mm -hmm. Beckwith was convinced the Army needed an even more elite direct action unit with the mental and physical fortitude to operate independently at length in the field. Furthermore, he emphasized that units should only be composed of experienced officers and non-commissioned officers, NCOs, who had already proven their skills in the field. Right, so that's the big difference then. You can't just go into this outfit. You've got to have, have already served, I'm guessing, and have probably getting some operational experience under your belt. Quite similar to how the Royal Marines would be. You, you've got to be in the Royal Marines before you can then go into Special Forces, all right? You, you can't just, like, join from being a civilian. You've got to get experience, guys. Makes perfect sense, though. You need to be either battle-hardened or hardened from training and experience. 100%. Today, Beckwith's vision still informs Delta Force's selective training regimen. To even qualify for the Delta Operator Training Course, a TC, Delta recruits must possess years of experience, with qualification for parachute operations, a secret security clearance, and a clean disciplinary record. Reportedly, So in a, in a nutshell, you've got to be a model soldier. Simple as that. No disciplinaries, i.e. not getting in trouble, not drinking on runs ashore and fighting and just being an overall good soldier which believe it or not is um there's there's many of there's many good soldiers but not not to the standards that delta require all right this is this is next level guys this is next level requirements mean that three quarters of delta force recruits are sourced from the army's two other primary special operations units the 75th ranger regiment which right. often engages in larger scale operations behind enemy lines and the green berets who specialize in embedding with training and leading local forces in foreign countries the operator training course so they've got to be already like a tier two special forces unit 
which is pretty pretty cool anyway you're already cool and then you're trying to be extra cool which is definitely cool <laughs> itself places heavy emphasis on perfecting marksmanship especially in hostage rescue contexts several facilities are maintained solely to practice hostage rescue scenarios in realistic environments ranging from large civilian buildings to airliners and warships Delta trainees also receive instruction in demolitions, lock picking and even bomb making techniques. They are trained by CIA operatives in espionage techniques from shadowing persons of interest to transmitting intel. That is that is as cool as it gets. So these guys get to work alongside CIA and obviously get trained by them in all of their different methods and stuff like that. So you've got a very 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 skilled soldier. You you don't get yeah the, yeah, this is the this is the top of the ladder, guys. All right, this is the top of the ladder in the in terms of the military. Even, you know, I would I would dare say in the world, one of the best, one of the best, if not best, special forces um, operators in the world, Delta Force operator. Let me know what you think in the chat, guys. If you agree with me, if you dis disagree with me, let me know what you think. Intelligence via dead drops and even aggressive tactical driving. Yes, the kind you thought was only a fantasy reserved for action movies. But there's also a sobering subtext to the extreme training regimen. Delta Force has historically often been called upon to perform missions with a high risk of failure. Operation Eagle Claw, the only Delta mission led by Beckwith, was an attempt to rescue hostages at the U.S. Embassy in Iran in 1979. It ended in flames before even encountering enemy forces when one of the helicopters involved crashed into the tanker it was refueling from, killing eight. This happens an awful lot, and you hear these stories with Delta as well and other special forces. It seems that helicopters and special forces just don't match, guys. There's something about it. There always seems to be problems, not with them um, as operators. They're the best of the best, but it's always the logistics of getting them from somewhere from point A to point B where the helicopters normally go down. Don't know what it is, okay? Obviously, it's because they're dealing in, you know, ultra-high um, aggressive environments where, you know, th the risk is that so much higher. And obviously, they hit onto something there as well. Often, the missions in which they get um, subject to are destined to fail. That, I mean, that takes some that takes some balls to go into that kind of oper operational theatre, knowing that no one else is going to do these operations, okay? It's just these guys. Eight. In October 1993, Delta snipers Randy Shugard and Gary Gordon Delta hopped off an orbiting helicopter, having insisted they need to insert on the ground to save crashed Army helicopter pilot Michael Durant from a besieging mob in the streets of Mogadishu, Somalia. Both were killed minutes later, along with three other Delta operators who perished in a day-long battle that left roughly a thousand dead. What? A thousand dead in a day one day battle? That is absolutely insane. These guys are badass. I don't care what anyone says. For me, these guys have got the ultimate respect. I've got the ultimate respect for these guys. In this light, the unit's brutal selection and training process is revealed to have a purpose beyond physical fitness fetishism. It's to help identify the kinds of individuals with the physical prowess and motivation to repeatedly undertake dangerous missions, which may indeed at times prove to be impossible. That it takes a different kind of person. We keep on talking about this and there's... There's levels of different type of people within the military. So you've got a certain type of person who will go in the the, the, the average military organization. Then you've got a, another type of person who's going to try and challenge themselves. You know, um, some of the more recent people that we've covered is the Jaeger soldats and the Finnish um, soldiers, the US Marines, the Royal Marines. And then you've got an, a tier above that where you've got to be even more of that type of person to be able to switch off your... Um, all negativity, only positivity. To be able to do this kind of stuff day in, day out, remember. Okay? That's going to fatigue anyone. So these guys are very special. Very, very special individuals. That was a fantastic... That was a fantastic insight, guys. I really enjoyed that. I... Uh, I've done a bit of reading on Delta Force over my um, my career in the Royal Marines, and obviously, you know, being in the military myself at one point, we do get to know um, who the who the boys and who the who the men are in the military, and these definitely are, are in a category of the men that can't be disputed. I don't think 
Um, let me know what you think, guys. If you did like this video, please smash the like button. Please subscribe to the channel if you're brand new here. Hitting the notification buttons because we literally go live on a daily basis. And yeah, I promised you two videos today and you're getting two videos. So this is it. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. If you want to speak to me or anyone else in the community, please join the Discord group. The link is in the description. If you've managed to donate to the channel today, thank you very much, guys. I'll give you the thumbs up. And if you want to see me smashing some Call of Duty or any other games on Twitch, I'll be live on Twitch most evenings, okay? So make sure you follow me on Twitch, guys, all right? But peace out from me, brothers and sisters. Love you lots. See you later. Take it easy.